two things are better than one thing. I think we can all agree on that. Having two dollars is better than only having one dollar. You can buy two cans of root beer if you have two dollars. And having two root beers is superior to having only one can. If you have two mirrors, you can do that thing where you hold them up to each other and break the laws of space and time and see infinitely into alternate dimensions. And having one retro handheld is nice, but if you have two, then you'll have one to share with a friend. Hey, speaking of which, having two friends is better than just one friend. But, but then you'd need three handhelds, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, what if your one friend has his own extra handheld? He has two and then he could share. But then if he wanted his own two friends, he'd need an extra handheld and the, the cycle would go on and on and you'd need an infinite number of handhelds for an infinite number of friends like the infinite mirrors thing and this whole analogy just falls apart. Because I'm here to show you a laptop with two screens, not an infinite number of screens. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm wasting your time with this. I don't know why you're even watching this right now, to be honest. The Ace Magic X1 is a weird, very weird laptop. It's got two screens. Laptops usually don't have two screens, do they? No, they don't. Definitely not one that flips out to the side. I'm sure you're looking at this and wondering all sorts of things about it. What does having two screens on a laptop feel like? What sort of hinge is that? Is the laptop itself any good? Can the second screen flip around? What sorts of fun, unique things can you do with a dual screen laptop? Should you sell your kids' favorite toys and books to get one? I, I don't know, but we're going to find out together. The box is pretty slim and sleek and sexy. There's a laptop over here. Under there is a box and in the box is a book of word papers. And over here is another box with a power adapter in there. This is a 60 watt USB-C power adapter. Taking a look at the device itself, we can see an Ace Magic logo on the top. And if that brand name doesn't inspire confidence, well, well I can't blame you. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll give this thing a good checkup from Dr. Techdweeb before we're done. Underneath, we have some rubber foot strips and a big rectangle ventilation hole strip thing. There's some fans under there. On the left side, we have two USB-C holes, one for power and one for data and peripherals. Peripherals. Rated at 5 gigabits per second, so no Thunderbolt support, unfortunately. And there's a speaker down near the uh, front. On the right side, we have one HDMI 2.0 hole and one USB-A hole and another speaker. When you open the laptop, you're greeted as expected by the keyboard and trackpad. A power button and some buttons for swapping displays up here, a Core i7 sticker and some other stickers, and this shiny metal plaque that says, stay hungry, stay foolish. <laughs> Way ahead of you there, Ace Magic. The star of the show is the screen. The left side of the display has some pretty substantial hinge stuff. When you open up the screen, it does open very easily. The hinge actually feels really good. You can open it as much as you want and it's firmly held in place pretty much no matter where you put it. Uh, more on that in a bit. And you can even turn this all the way around to the back so your second screen can be on the outside of the laptop. And we'll, we'll get into the different Kama Sutra screen positions and what they're good for in a bit. This thing is powered by the Intel Core i7-1255U, which is a 12th generation core chip made to be powerful but focus more on mobile efficiency. We also get integrated Iris XE graphics clocked at 1.25 gigahertz, but don't expect magical gaming performance. But we'll We'll, we'll uh, see how far we can push it. We get 16 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte 2280 NVMe SSD, and we get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and a 60 watt hour battery, which is pretty big. Speaking of big, it's a little on the heavy side. 1.9 kilograms or four pounds, three ounces in freedom units. It, it's definitely not a thin and light thing. For the system, there's nothing much to report. It's a standard install of Windows 11 Home, which is good news. Ace Magic has gotten into trouble in the past because a few of their mini PCs came loaded with malware. I did a scan with Microsoft Defender and Malware Bytes and it came up clean. So let's hope that Ace Magic has learned a hard lesson with that debacle. The Windows install is pretty basic. No bloatware or any bullcrap, so it's good to go. The keyboard is... All right, it's a, it's a good size and it looks nice, but the feel is just sort of all right. 
It doesn't feel like a premium laptop keyboard by any means. It's a bit, it's a bit hollow and plasticky feeling. Same thing with the trackpad. The inputs are fine, but the click feels a bit cheap and the overall experience of using this thing to type and browse the web is just kind of average feeling. This thing does have a front facing camera and microphone and it's total garbage. It feels about the quality of a $10 Amazon webcam and the microphone has a clicking noise that I wasn't able to get rid of. Ah, uh, look, look at the, the, with this webcam on this uh, laptop. Isn't it amazing? No, no, it's pretty terrible. I definitely plan on getting a webcam with a mic if you need to do anything substantial. The sound of the fan isn't good. It's a little high pitched and whiny and it's pretty much always going. I prefer silent laptops, at least when they're sitting there at the desktop doing nothing. It's it's not terrible, but they could have done more with the fan curves to minimize this, I think, because the temps definitely don't justify a noisy fan here. However, the sound that this thing can put out from the speakers is actually pretty great. Hi there. How you doing? I'm Ted I was expecting subpar audio, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's it's not like super high quality premium audio, but it's above average. Good for watching movies or music or tech tweeb on YouTube while you work, if you're into that sort of thing. The star of the show is obviously the screen. Or should I say screens? Yes, I should. Because there's two. Two screens. First, the actual quality of the screens is good. They're 14 inches, 1080p, not a touchscreen, and only 60 hertz screens, but that's fine because this thing isn't meant for gaming. But they are bright and clear, good colors, good viewing angles. I think they look great. One thing I don't like is the size of the bezels. I, I, I get that they had to do some unique stuff to get this hinge thing to work, but I, I think these huge bezels take away from the overall screen experience. I think for this sort of setup, the hinge is really what most people will want to know about. And it's, it's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's a hard problem to solve. A second screen off to the side, and they did a pretty good job. For the most part, it's firm and it won't move around on you. If you angle the screen just right and bounce it around and let gravity take over, it, it'll pull that second screen down. But for most reasonable use cases, it does stay where you put it. The bigger problem isn't the hinge on the second screen, but the main one. It's firm enough for normal use, but since there is a lot of weight because of that second screen, it does bounce around more than most screens when you jiggle the thing. So just don't jiggle your thing around and you'll be fine, I guess. <laughs> I didn't personally have an issue with it, even when using it in my lap, but I guess I could see some people getting annoyed at the general bounciness of this whole setup. But like two screens on a laptop, that's very unusual and also amazing for two reasons. One is the sheer screen real estate that you get here. Tons of room to do the stuff you want to do. And here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. That looks like what you would buy from a store. So many activities. But the other aspect is the flexibility you get by having a second screen that you can either use to extend your desktop or mirror it onto the back of your laptop or act as its own display to use. These buttons up here change the screen layout. So A and B will turn on only the primary screen or the second screen. And then the extend desktop button will, you know, extend the desktop across both screens. And then the mirror screen button will make it so that both screens are showing the same thing. And that the possibilities of what you can do with all these options are interesting. You can use a dual screen setup if you're playing a game and watching stuff or doing productivity work and you need the extra screen real estate. Or you can move that screen off to the side or around back to show something specific to an audience. You know, if you're given like a PowerPoint presentation or whatever, or putting on a movie for your kid or your dog to watch while you work on important adult stuff. And mirroring the display means that someone can easily see what you see. If you want to show someone something, like if you're giving a tutorial, all these screen options are more or less to take the place of needing to use a second monitor. But because carrying around a second monitor and dealing with setting it up every time you pull out your laptop is a pain in the buns. The Ace Magic X1 is the world's first first dual screen laptop. They're, they're pretty proud of that in their marketing and they, they should be. It's not every day that we get a unique product like this. I'm, I'm sure there are some users out there who would have a use case that this thing
thing would be perfect for. And I'm glad that those dweebs have this to do that specific stuff, whatever it is. But I'm not that dweeb. I'm tech dweeb and tech dweeb likes to play video games and chat on Discord and make art and videos and watch Adventure Time while playing retro games. So how does it do with that stuff, you ask? I'll, I'll say right off the start, uh, dual screen gaming isn't really something you're going to be messing with here. You can't by default stretch your game across both screens, for instance. And even if you could stretch a game between them, it would be super awkward to play because of that huge bezel right in the middle. It makes no sense. So I think a reasonable gaming scenario is playing a game on the main screen and using the second screen to maybe chat with your friends, maybe have Discord open. Maybe if you like to watch YouTube while you game, you could do that easily, looking up walkthroughs or whatever. I guess even streaming. Although I have a hard time seeing why anyone would want to use a laptop with a terrible webcam and microphone and lackluster gaming performance for streaming. Let's be real. Speaking of which, well, when it comes to the performance, it's not a gaming laptop. The i7 that's in here is a, a wonderful CPU for efficient desktop tasks, but it's not a gaming chip and it can't handle any AAA games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is my go-to game for AAA gaming testing and yeah, no, no. Even at low settings, even at 720p, even with resolution scaled down so low that it's basically impossible to see what's actually happening, th there's no way that I'd play this game. Uh, definitely don't plan to play any AAA games that are even remotely demanding on here. However, just because we can't run AAA games, that doesn't mean you can't play games. Because even on a non-gaming laptop like this, we have three great libraries of games that we can explore. Older games, indie games, and retro games. If you're into games from the Xbox 360 era, you can play lots of those games on here. I gave a few of those a try on the Ace Magic X1 and I was having a great time. I connected up a Bluetooth controller and that worked great. And because I had that second screen, I tried to make use of it. I, I was like watching YouTube and chatting on Discord while I was gaming. And that was really nice here. And also retro games. Obviously, these games can run on any computer, but I love playing them if you haven't noticed. And the vast majority of the time when I play retro games, I like to have a second monitor open with some music or a YouTube video playing. I played a, a whole bunch of games on this thing and I was loving having that second screen off to the side. I have this external SSD that I use specifically just for my portable retro bat build. So I just plug that in and played my games off that. This is the AI Fro, I, I Fro P10 Magnetic Portable SSD. It's a one terabyte uh, SSD and I turned this into my portable emulation system. I can use this on any Windows PC and run my RetroBat build and get access to all my retro games on here. This thing is freaking tiny, so it's perfect to toss into your bag uh, when you go places. Perfect for a laptop, I guess. And apparently this thing is MagSafe compatible. So you can like magnetically snap it onto the back of your phone and plug it in with this special cord. I'll toss a link to this in the doodad below if you want to pick one up. And finally, I need to mention that indie games work a treat on a system like this. The 12th gen i7 that we have on here isn't made for gaming, but the vast majority of indie games aren't demanding at all and you can play them just fine on here. I've said it before uh, many times, but I could easily be happy as a gamer with nothing but indie games. These games are so much fun and when I'm playing Halls of Torment or Bot Vice, I don't care that I'm not playing the latest graphic demanding AAA games because the experience that I get from indies is just as legit of a gaming experience as I get from any other type of game. And just like with retro games, very often with indie games I do prefer having a YouTube video or some article or Discord or whatever opened on a second screen while I play. So it's definitely nice to be able to do that here without needing an actual second monitor to deal with. So should you buy the Ace Magic X1? Well, it's hard to say. It's not a one-size-fits-all device. Not every person needs a second screen on a laptop, and the compromises that you make in terms of the size and weight and general usage of the thing mean that the only type of person who should consider this are the dweebs who need a second screen. Uh, for me, as someone who enjoys having a second screen, I often loved having one on this laptop. It's so convenient, and it works really well. The hinge is strong, the screen is good, it, it's nice to have, but as someone who also likes thin and light laptops and not having to mess around with thingamabobs hanging off my doodads, I, I sometimes found it annoying to have a second screen to deal with when I wanted to quickly open up my laptop to do some emails or whatever. It's the kind of thing where you'd only want this if 
most of the time you do need a second screen. It's amazing for that, not amazing for other stuff, not amazing for gaming, although you can play lower spec games on it. It's not the highest quality laptop in the world, but it's pretty good for the price. This thing is 900 bucks from the Ace Magic website. And for what you get here, a one terabyte NVMe, i7 CPU, high quality audio, and two screens, obviously, I think it's a good buy if you need what this does, even if there are some compromises that had to be made. And if you want one of these, there's a link in the doodad below. And that brings us to the end. I'm curious to know what you think of this thing. Is a two screen laptop something you're interested in? Do you need something like this? Do you think it's cool, stupid? Share your thoughts and anything else you'd like to tell me about your life in the comments below. Click the like button if you like the video, click the dislike button if you didn't. I'm TechTweeb, thanks for watching, Bye bye